ecological grief is a real and important thing to understand because there are so many layers to it. This week, of course, many of us who live in the Pacific Northwest have been thinking about and feeling and perhaps even immersed in the impact of the wildfires. So whether we've just been, you know, breathing smoke because the air is filled with it or have actually had to evacuate uh, our home, it is affecting all of us. And particularly for those of us who are sensitive, we feel it deeply because we have a sense of that it isn't just the loss of home, the loss of place, the loss of lives. You know, people, some people have died, some people have lost their homes, some people have lost, not just their home as in their house, but their place that they have connected with for countless years. And some people through generations, and certainly the First Nations people of this land since time immemorial, they're, they're losing places right now even more than what has already been lost through the impact of colonization and so this is really oh this is really really big there's also the layer of that these wildfires we're experiencing the worst fire season in british columbia in its history that's a big deal <laughs> and why are we experiencing this fire, these fires, it's because of the drought. And I, I spend a lot of time walking the land and walking the land where I live this winter. I was already saying to my friends and to my family, you know, we're gonna have, it's gonna be a bad fire season because already the forest was uh, so dry this winter and the creek beds have been so dry. And so for those of us who are connected to nature in that way where we're actually like observing what's happening, it's not a one-off situation, right? There's an understanding, this layer of we are in a deep ecological crisis right now. And it's scary. It's scary to hold that, to hold what we are facing as a generation, what our children are going to be facing as a generation. And to feel that to be able to actually feel that is very is very big. It takes a lot of capacity to be able to feel that and to acknowledge that, which is probably why so many people are not acknowledging what's happening. And there's also another layer to to what's happening. I want to also name this layer of ancestral trauma that comes forward with the intensity of the fires and people having to evacuate, right? So many of us have ancestors that had to leave, that had to leave their homes, that had to leave their land, that, you know, immigrated to this land <clears throat> because their homes were no longer safe, whether that was because of war and colonization. And so that trauma of that, of that we may still hold in our bones from our ancestors' experience of having to leave their places or being taken from their places without their consent. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah. When we are immersed in the intensity of a situation like what we're facing in British Columbia and in the Northwest Ter Territories right now, that trauma can certainly be triggered and come to the surface. and we can, that, that survival, that grief, that the fear will be present, even if we're not actually being directly impacted by the fires. So the reason why I name these layers is because as soon as we start to recognize what's happening, then we can actually be with it a little bit more, right? Be, we become more present with what is happening. And with presence comes the ability to feel it a bit more, to feel it. And when we can feel it, we can start to actually allow that energy to move, right? So rather than getting caught in the head of like, what are we afraid of and what should we do and da da da, you know, to be able to actually just come down into the body 
and feel what we're experiencing, you know, feel the fear, feel the sadness, feel the, the grief, the devastation, like to be able to feel that in our body while also still staying connected to the little beautiful things that are around us in the moment, right? This is so key, it's so key. We have to stay connected to the beauty and to the gratitude at the same time because otherwise we can so easily become lost in in the suffering of it and the pain of it but to to access the to access the uh, the ability of our being of our soma to actually metabolize this grief we have to stay connected to gratitude and to that uh, sense of connection with life reverence for life right because because really ultimately Everything that we have, we will lose. Everything that we have, we will lose. And whether that is in our own personal lives or collectively, that is an inevitable, an inevitable, right? And so to be able to acknowledge that, we can actually allow that to bring us into a place of even deeper re reverence for life, even deeper um, connection and commitment to life, right? And if everybody was doing this, then we wouldn't be in this crisis because when we are deeply connected to life, we cannot do things like, you know, the logging industry that is taking all the trees that create the balance of moisture and rain in the atmosphere so that we don't have fires, so we don't have flooding. You know, we can't, we can't cause harm when we're deeply connected to life because we understand that that, that is us. Right? That is us. That what we are harming is us. And so the more that we can feel, the more of us who can feel in this way, the more we can help the people around us to be able to feel in this way, the more chance we have of actually being able to turn the steering wheel around. You know, like, let's not drive the car off the cliff, people. Let's turn it around and go the other way, you know, into the beauty of possibility of what we could still create for our future generations. So thank you for taking your precious, precious time to listen to me today. I hope that you found that helpful or enlightening in some way. And uh, please follow my page and jump on my email list if you want to be more connected. Okay, blessings.